Hello, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm gonna let you in on the five reasons why Paula Rego is my favorite artist. I'll also be attempting to paint just like her. Stay with me till the end of the video to see the results. Paula Rego is, as I said, one of my top favorite artists. There you are. Oh, that's wonderful. And I don't think she's too well known, actually. At least not as much as she deserves. I've also seen quite a lot of different videos on YouTube by art YouTubers that I really like, like Anna Cornejo, for example. She's done one where she's basically doing a copy of Sargent, which is one of her favorite artists. There's so much realness in his paintings. I've seen a few others as well doing Van Gogh, and I thought, you know, if I was ever to pick one, I would do a Paolo Rego. And so that's what I'm doing. I actually started working on this video a full year ago and that's because last year the Tate Britain organized a retrospective exhibition of Paolo Rego. The exhibition was breathtaking. It has some of the most recognizable paintings by Paolo Rego. It was everything from politically provocative, it had a lot of personal and uniquely female perspective. It was really amazing. When I came back from the Tate exhibition, I was super fired up to make a new video to share Paolo Rego with everyone here. But since then, a lot of different things happened in my life. I moved countries, I got COVID, I uh, got engaged, and this video ended up being completely put off. Until this week, I heard the news that Paolo Rego has actually passed away. I just immediately wanted to brush off my footage to put together this video as an homage, as a tribute of why I value her work so much and also to share with you my work on trying to copy her most famous style of painting and hopefully creating a few little pieces that I'm proud of. To draw like Paula Rego, you will need pastel paper, hard pastel, soft pastel. She describes working in pastels like painting with your fingers. I didn't want to have brush marks, you see. I'd rather do it with a pastel, with a stick. She's one of the most influential figures of artists working today. So I'm going to give you a clean little list of the reasons why Paolo Rego is my favorite artist. The reason number one, one is that I can relate a lot to Paolo Rego's work as well as to her life. Both of us were born Portuguese, both of us have moved at a very young age to England. Both of us also have a passion for art, obviously, although one of us is a lot more accomplished than the other. But where I want to get with all of this is I do feel really close to Paolo Rego's experiences. I also feel when I look at Paolo Rego's paintings that she has this kind of compulsion to reflect about her Portuguese heritage and, and Portugal in general, even when she lived and worked somewhere else. And I do understand that if you grab my sketchbook, for example, half of it will have references to Portugal in some way. And I also relate very strongly to this atmosphere that she creates in her paintings. I think they look like they were painted through the eyes of a child who is just in shock and fear of the world that is so chaotic and misshapen and illogical and cruel with all these different incomprehensible social norms. Number two, Paolo Rego does transmit a very childlike energy. She has a mix of kind of dark interpretations for events and an emotional charge of tragedy. <laughs> And at the same time, she has this childish capacity to be really naive. You will actually find the occasional Disney princess in Paolo Rego's paintings and elements of traditional stories for children. And I have a feeling that she's attracted to the darkest ones. Her paintings have the same effect of horror stories. And I find this fascinating because fairy tales and stories for children, they tend to be cautionary, where you are trying to pass down to the child the useful fear of risky situations or suspicious characters like wolves or strange men or stepmothers and the like. 
That's the path that most of Palo Hego's works take. They do have this cautionary element where you can feel the struggle, the tension, the difficult situations that the actors in her paintings are dealing with. And her painting is also very much theatrical in that way and I love that. It always feels that she's playing a scene for you. It also reminds me of, you know, childhood and theatre play. The way she paints, she actually has actors and props in her studio everywhere acting as models for her paintings. So she acts out the scene in real life and then that helps her translate it into the canvas and actually having that very powerful, emotional, human delivery. Her characters are also quite grotesque and it tends to be really difficult in a Paolo Higgs painting to really tell the villain from the victim and usually there's a bit of both in all characters. I think it's really interesting as well and this goes into the third, <laughs> number three, reason why, you know, for me Paolo Higgs is a, a colossal artist and definitely one of my favourites. The way she presents women, even in situations of fragility and where they're victims really, is never as the victim and that I find very interesting, you know, women who are going through violence or going through abortion women who are dependent. You look at those women, at those figures, which are not pretty, are not, you know, we were talking about the Disney princess. Even Paolo Higo's princesses are distorted and strong. They are muscly, they are powerful. Her victims, when you look at their faces, at their visual language, they are heroines, really. And what she does is that she looks at the victim and she empowers that character in a way that we cannot help but look at them in a heroic light. That's phenomenal. To me, it always looked like her portraits are really portraits of the personality, not so much of the body. When she draws someone, I think it probably resembles less the person that she's drawing, the model that she's using, but rather more the personality of that character. At the end, she is creating these stories, these dramas. Going into my fourth point, oh, reason number four, just like Goya, she really has a political voice which she uses through her art. Now, I've studied politics, I love it, and I find it beautiful when part of the purpose of art is actual political. Probably some of the works that she is most proud of are also those that probably impact me the most, which are the paintings she's done of these illegal abortions, for example, which happen when abortion in actual medical centers is not really a path. I'm not not sure to which point it actually had an impact in Portuguese politics, but I think you can feel that everything that she actually paints, she does believe in deeply. And it's funny as well, you know, in this moment when uh, we're always looking for great women that can inspire us in different industries, in art that role is very usually attributed to figures like Frida Kahlo, for example, who uh, in terms of feminist issues and ideas are very weak and, and Paolo Higgs is a great example of a woman artist who is very firm in her ideals and paints accordingly. And finally, the fifth reason for Paolo Higgo being my favourite artist is that she's had a huge career. She hasn't started by painting her abortion or dub woman portraits. It's the evolution that really makes a great artist. And I think that gives us hope that, you know, in your lifetime, you're able to complete a series of works and improve in your skills. And uh, eventually you'll be able to develop your own style, to have your cohesive way of doing art. And Paola Higo has gone through so many different phases. She's done abstract paintings, actually. Within the exhibition that the Tate organized for her, there was also a series of paintings of animals, for example, of children's stories. You can see this evolution. Her latest works are of incredible dimensions and emotionally mega powerful, but obviously no, that's not where an artist starts from and I think it can give us all some hope as well for growth in our skills and in our artistry. 